He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High God shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God, in Him will I trust. Surely He shall deliver thee from the noise of the pestilence. Yeah, the Bible reminds us that when we dwell in the secret place of the Most High God, we will abide under the shadow of His wings. And this is just giving an imagery of God as a protector, God as the one who watch over His people. And we know that when we are with God, God will never leave us, not forsakes us. And it's very important to know that we have nothing to fear or to worry about when our lives are in the hand of God. And I would encourage anyone to continue to trust in the Lord. If you have not yet developed a relationship with God, I encourage you to do so. Get to know Him as a Father. I know saying this might be not painting a proper or a pretty image for some people because some people don't have a good relationship with their Father. And they might view God in the same light that they view their earthly Father. But I will assure you that God is the father of all the fathers and that God loves you with an everlasting love as the Bible reminds us. And he tells us that he know the thoughts that he has towards you, thoughts of good and not of evil. The Bible reminds us also that for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world but that the world through him might be saved. And man rather darkness than light because their deeds were evil. As we look at the Bible and compare the Bible to what is happening in our world today, we can say clearly we are in the last days. And the Bible gives us the outline prophecies of the kingdoms that will rise and rule through our human history. For example, we see the image that he gave in Daniel 2 to Nebuchadnezzar. And Nebuchadnezzar relate this dream to his wise men and they could not interpret the dream. And because of that, he ordered all the wise men to be killed. Daniel and his three companions were recently graduated wise men of the province of Babylon and they too Though they weren't present with those wise men that the decree has been given to destroy, Daniel and his friends were also included. Upon hearing the urgency of this de decree, Daniel petitioned the eunuch that he would give him time and he would come and give the king the interpretation to his dream. So after this, we see here that Daniel went and made it known to his friends and they petitioned the God of heaven and he relate the dream and its interpretation to Daniel in a night vision. Daniel went to the king and gave that interpretation, tell the king his dream and also the interpretation thereof. And we see here that the, the king dreamed dreamt a dream which he saw in his dream an image made of various metal, head of gold which represents Babylon, arm and breast of silver, belly and tie of brass, and feet 
of iron legs of iron feet of iron and clay and all this represents the kingdoms that would rule throughout the period of human history and we know from history babylon rules after babylon the next kingdom was the medes and the persians and after the medes and the persians we have greece and after greece we have rome and after rome we have divided rome which now became the prominent nations in europe and the bible tells us that though they are divided in europe they will mingle themselves with the seeds of men but they shall not cleave one to another and we have seen that various leaders try to unite europe over the years we know charles main tried mussolini tried hitler tried and none of them has succeeded and in that vi that vision daniel saw a stone cut out of the mountain without hands and smoothed the image and its feet and that stone became a great mountain so friends if we have come from this image the head of gold arm and breast of silver belly and tie of brass feet of iron legs of iron feet of iron and clay and all these kingdom babylon has risen and gone off the scene the medes and the persians came they gone off the scene greece came they gone off the scene babylon came gone off the scene nowhere in divided babylon is rome came gone off the scene and now we are living in divided rome the next kingdom to be set up is the kingdom of the stone which is the kingdom of jesus christ and we are living now in the section of the image which is the feet of iron and clay and i ask the question how long do we have until the next setting up of the next kingdom you and i do not know the answer to that jesus said no man knoweth the day or the hour of the coming of the son of man but we can tell from the signs that all around us that we are living in the last days because we are in the feet of the image and when you left from the feet there is no more part of the image you can go so the next kingdom to be set up is the kingdom of the Lord Jesus Christ and I say to you my friends if you have not yet made a covenant relationship with God I invite you to do so before it is eternally too late I invite you to get to know God the Bible reminds us in Jeremiah 29 11 it says for I know the thoughts that I think towards you says the Lord thoughts of good and not of evil to give you a hope and a future and he also says that and you shall call unto me and you shall come and pray unto me and I will hear you and I will answer you God is calling you Isaiah 1 verse 18 he says come now let us reason together though your sins be as scarlet they shall be as white as snow though they be red like crimson they shall be as wool God wants to wash you from your sin you know you might say well I have not done anything wrong I didn't kill anyone I didn't steal I haven't coveted anyone for anything but my friend 
The moment we are pushed from our mother's womb, we are pronounced a sinner. That's why we need to be born again. And how do we born again? Nicodemus wants to know the question, the answer to that question. And the Lord said to him, No one can see the kingdom of God unless he's born again. Born of the water and of the spirit. Jesus is talking about baptism, which is an outward expression of an inward cleansing, inward transformation. And this is what all of us need to go through. The reason why we must be born again is that something has gone wrong with our first birth. Our first birth, we have been born into the kingdom of Satan. We're born in sin and shaping in iniquity. So we need to have a rebirth. We need to be dead to self, dead to who we are spiritually, so that we can be born again into the kingdom of God and Jesus want to give you and I this experience if you have not yet had that experience he's calling you today to that experience and my prayer for you is that you will heed the voice of God God loves you with an everlasting love and with loving kindness he is drawing you to himself he wants you, my friend, to experience a new life. He wants you to experience a change. He wants you to know that you don't have to continue to live the way you are living. A life without Jesus. He wants you to in, enjoy abundant life. He wants you to have an experience with him. Having an encounter with him that will transform you. Without Christ, we are nothing. And the carnal man is enmity towards God. He does not please God. And I call upon you today to give God a chance in your life. Give God a chance in your life. Soon and very soon, Jesus will come. And will put an end to all the foolishness that is going on in this world. You see, Satan wants to deceive and to destroy you. Satan wants you to believe that nothing is wrong with the way you are living. Satan wants you to believe that you can be saved just the way you are. You see, friends, this has been his plan to destroy you. I encourage you to read the Word of God. Read the Bible. And God will give you the understanding thereof. Read his word. Ask of him for the understanding. And for the gift of his Holy Spirit. To come into your life. And to make that change in you. That lasting change. That change that will transform your life. Transform your heart. Ask him for the mind of Christ. And he will give it to you. Friends, the Bible reminds us that seek ye first the kingdom of God and all his righteousness and all the things that you need in this life, God will add it unto you. He also reminds us that no one can serve two masters. We either love one or hate the other or hate one and love the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. Friends, I love you. I wish I could accept for you. But this is something you have to do for yourself. I just want to thank you all for watching my videos. And I pray that these messages will have an impact on your life. These messages will change, bring a change in you that God wants to bring. That you will continue on the path of righteousness that you have set your feet on and for those who have not yet started that they will see the need of starting this journey and allow the Lord God to have his way in them and through them you know God has been so good to me 
God has been so wonderful to me. I'm a young man, and what I've gone through in this life, I could work, write volumes on it. The places that God had bring me from. I know there is a living God. Because of my experience with him and how he has transformed me, how he has blessed me and how he has saved me from death, deliver me from illness, deliver me. And right now I am here to proclaim his word. God is good. He is mighty and he is everlasting. I just want to pray with you now. Oh God, in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, I come to you on behalf of all my viewers. And I lift up my voice in prayer on their behalf. And I ask you, Lord, in the name of Jesus, that you will continue to be with them. Continue to bless them. Continue to keep them. Continue, Lord, to help them to understand your words. And most of all, Lord, to give themselves to you before it is eternally too late. I ask eternal God that you will forgive their sins, that you will wash them in your blood, that you will help them, Lord, to know and to understand that you love them with an ever love and with loving kindness you are drawing them to yourself. I pray, Lord, that you will strengthen their hold upon you, those of them who have made that commitment to walk with you. I pray, God, that you will strengthen their faith. Lord, I ask for those who have not yet started this journey, that you will remove every hindrance, remove every stumbling block that is in their way, and make possible, O oh God, the path for them to travel on. Give them victory over every difficulties, over every besetting sin. I pray, God, for those who are having problem in their marriage, that you will bring a solution. For those who are having trouble on their jobs, that you will move those troubles in the name of Jesus. For those who are suffering from illness, disease, sicknesses, I pray, God, that you will touch their lives, touch their body, touch wherever they are aching, wherever the pain is, remove it in the name of Jesus. For those who are in the hospital, I pray, God, that you will visit with them, that you will bring deliverance to them in the name of Jesus. Lord, I pray for those who are having problems with their children, that you will give them the strength, give them the courage, give them, Lord God, the wisdom, the knowledge, the understanding, Standing. Give them the parental skill that they need, Lord, that they will be the best parent they can be. Father, for those who are seeking a spouse, I ask, Lord, that you will provide for them. Provide a man for the woman. And also provide, Lord Jesus. Also provide, Lord. Also provide, Lord. Um a lady for the man i pray god that you will bless them financially bless them emotionally bless them intellectually bless them in all the areas of their life in the mighty name of jesus and in 